in life, when you grow up, you're we're told what to do, we're told what to wear by our parents, we're told what school to go to, and this is not technically on until you're 18 that you make your own decisions. And at that point, funny enough, the world still puts you in a box depending on what school you go to, who you're with, how you express yourself online. People then have a viewpoint of you. They identify you in a certain way that only they see you in. And so if people meet you in a certain state in your life, it becomes very difficult for them to alter your per their perception of you because they've seen you in this limelight of being, example for me, someone who would love to party, someone who I wouldn't have a shot, I would have shots. You know what I mean? Like I was that guy. And so if they had the identity of you because of you deciding to make those choices, for them to see you in the opposite light becomes very, very difficult. And naturally, in human nature, it's not even the person itself, they're gonna doubt you. We are Gold Ivy. Our mission is to empower you to own and unleash your truth. Stories of resiliency are gold and ivy grows in hard places. Those hard places are what creates space for light to shine through. You decide what works for your daily life and how to transform our lessons into your gold. This is Ivy Unleashed, a Gold Ivy production. Welcome back to the Ivy Unleashed podcast. Today is going to be magical. We can feel it. The energy from the person that is staring at us right now, the smile. Oh my gosh, everybody. Welcome to Ivy Unleash, Roger Rojas. Hello. Excited to be here. Excited for this conversation. You might know Roger as the content CEO, and I just want to get right into it. Where did that name come from? Why that name? Yeah, so it was, I actually remember the exact night and day that I told myself I need to start a new handle and give it premise and strength. It was actually uh, to the that night was October 30th, uh, 2019. Uh, I was asked to fly out to Los Angeles uh, to document what I had no idea what would be the 100 million mastermind from Dan Fleischman, which is 100 people that pay 100 grand to be in the room. And after the first night, which was a private mansion, and I'm interview, I'm shooting Mark Wahlberg. I finished the inter I finished filming and I go back to my room and I call one of my closest friends who introduced me to Dan and um, his name's Casey Adams. And I said to Casey, I was like, man, this just happened. This is insane. And he had a strong social media presence and he was known he's 19, 20 years old, but he had a really strong presence on personal branding. And so I said to him, I was like, dude, I need to change my name. It can't just be this. It can't be that. And he's like, dude, I just you're always around CEOs now. And, and you're the content guy. And he's like, I just feel like the content CEO makes so much sense for you. You're the guy who, who like creates legitimacy in the heads of CEOs through content. And I was like, dang, that sounds pretty cool. And then in that moment, I search it, it's available, took the handle and that's kind of where it started. Um, I always tell people it was never out of ego. It was just kind of like the, the aura of the people I was around and who I was working with consistently and the people I admired and who I aspired to be like. So it just all aligned. Well, everything you just described just is an example of what you do, who you're surrounding yourself with. The fact that you have the caliber of people you're taking content of just speaks to your talent and that people trust you. We saw you at a huge event with Jen Gottlieb and you were taking content for them and your presence there, the way that you carried yourself. And since then, we've been following you and the journey since then, which was almost a year ago, you have completely Great. transformed. And yes. so we're going to talk about that today. We have so many questions for you, but we always like to get into, you know, we know a lot about you, but our listeners might not. We know your life has been a lot about curiosity leading up to where you are now and taking lots of odd jobs. But can you tell our listeners kind of how you got started in this business and how you got to kind of where you are now? Yeah, so it started, I was born and raised in Miami, Florida. So I spent the first 18 years of my life there. Uh, and then at that point, I made the decision to have take my undergraduate in upstate New York, as someone would call it, or Westchester County at Iona University. Uh, and that's where kind of what you described and how I believe I live my life is out of curiosity. I believe a lot of times, you know, through circumstance or opportunities, people are, are put into positions that they think are not right or may not be for them. But I say the opposite in regards of trying as much as you can for you then to eliminate what you know, what is your passion, what is your not, what is not. Same thing when it comes to food. 
you know, you don't know what type of food you like if you never try it. So for me, that was the case throughout my university time is that I took on every job you can think of from a waiter to a babysitter to, you know, giving tours around my university. Um, and, and, and through that process, um, I landed a job with Gatorade. It was a marketing tour and Gatorade put a camera in my hand. And at that point when I was documenting, uh, on auto and I told them I knew how to took photos, I had no idea. Um, there's a handful of photos that really kind of sparked my interest. I'm like, man, this is kind of cool. I was able to document moments that then people look back on and they would smile and say to themselves, wow, this is such a great photo. And uh, I went home and I also believe this is why it's massive to put yourselves in rooms or with like-minded people who either are doing the thing or aspiring to do the thing like you. I reached out to a family friend who uh, had started his own production company and he was older um, and he was someone that, you know, at the time, this is back in 2015, he had drones when drones were not, you know, on the market. This was something if you had a drone, it was like in the movies. And he had an in-house photographer full time and I asked him if I could shadow him. He was someone who had a strong following on Instagram, someone who knew a lot more than me. And I knew that if, you know, the constant curiosity of let me see what he's doing and how his life is today. And if that's something that would interest me. And so I, I spent the day shadowing him and his team. And at the end of it, um, the family friend then says goodbye to me. And he's like, hey, that camera in the back is yours. The only thing you have to do is to go out and document that's my only thing that you have to do. So I went back with homework. At the time, I was a part of a fraternity. Uh, there's another lesson here, which is sometimes people are always looking for opportunities in other places when it's right in front of them. And to think about the resources or the people right in front of you and how you can show up or serve them. And so for me, I was looking for clients, which I don't even know what that word was at the time. And I was just looking to do work. And my fraternity uh, had never done a video to promote the next class coming in to get enticed people to to show up and and go through what is known as rush week. And so I directed, edited, and put together this video that was then promoted um, to get people to join our fraternity. That caught the attention of another sorority. I did it for them. And as you know, the trickle down effect, friends, the university, I do a video for the university. And that finally gave me the chance to then um, the restaurant across the street from the university, which was another Sterlicious. The owner sees it. His name was Paul. He comes up to me. He says, hey, um, I see these videos you've been doing. It's awesome. I can't offer you money. We don't have a budget, but you could eat here for free as much as you want. And for anyone in university that lives off campus, that is like I hit the lotto. <laughs> I was thrilled. And so at that point, I was like, I'm in. Um, and then they had an in-house nutritionist with someone who... Uh, again, at the time, who I had taken a class with, uh, but none, had no personal relationship with, he hits me up and saying, hey, I'm opening up this gym. Uh, can you help me uh, edit these three videos, 100 bucks? And this was when Instagram was only 15 seconds. These are like the bind days almost. And he's like, I have, these th I have this content. I need three videos, 15 seconds each. And it was the most nerve wrecking I still remember editing the videos in my college living room and thinking to myself, what am I doing? How am I doing this? What am I doing? How am I doing this? And I, there's another lesson in that in saying that a lot of the times the things that we aspire to do are really uncomfortable because we've never done it and that's okay. Um, and I think there is when you have the passion and kind of love and the best intent to do what you can, um, I think things always end up working out. And so for me, they did. And that led to me being the head of marketing for the gym for the next three years, where when I graduated, I had to explain to my family I was taking pictures of a gym. <laughs> um, I went to a private Catholic high school, private Catholic university, and my family's like, what are you doing next? I'm like, I'm going to a gym two miles away to take pictures and videos. <laughs> and uh, what I also realized at that point, too, is that, you know, they hear the saying is that your family won't understand. Um, I just believe that they didn't understand because I couldn't articulate best of what I was wanting out of my own life. So my uncertainty was like completely transferred to them where they're looking for answers in my life. And I'm saying, I don't know. And so for their, me saying, I don't know, that creates massive doubt. And now I understand why they were so hell bent on me not doing it or questioning why I was doing it because I couldn't even articulate mm. what tomorrow looked like and how I was going to achieve anything I thought I was going to be doing. Um, Where now here's another massive lesson for creators when they're starting is the idea that when you're trying to do something you've never done, a lot of times the people close to you want the best for you. And so they're going to question your journey, not because they're trying to bring you down because they're just curious. 
and care comes with questions. And so I think it's huge that you not only understand where you're going, creating that plan to the best of your abilities. And a lot of times too, just knowing that you, it may not be the path that you think you're going to be on, but at least you're able to create comfort in those around you to get you to go fo forward. Because I've realized that with my personal fitness journey over the past six months, I wouldn't have been able to do anything without the community of people around me. And those were the same people who were understanding of me, who were listening to me, who were there for me. And the moments that you question a lot. And so let's fast forward. I spent the next four years there. And then I kind of, you know, as opportunity, if you hear it, my stories consistent of where I was just in the right room at the right time because I just kept showing up and I kept sh serving people and doing that over and over. Led me to New York City, where for a year I was uh, head of social and assisting with content for Grip Boxing, which is a gym owned by Pitbull and Tony Robbins. Um, and there was like what I consider was my not the golden goose egg, but the idea of like when you're in a room where there's so many highlighted people that all do so many amazing things, different opportunities come from different places just because you decide to be in that one room. And so the gym for me was always that is like people come from every walks of life with every business and they all needed content. And so from the gym at, you know, the one that was transformed fitness in Westchester to the one in New York city, all these fitness trainers needed to do ads for their brands, products or services. So then I just started working with so many different brands and so many different products because of these trainers from the gym. And then that ultimately led to me um, getting a, a phone call or a text, I should say, from Dan um, after meeting him in Tampa, Florida in March of saying, hey, I want, to, I want you to come out to L.A. for three days. It was the it was November 1st to the 3rd. So I flew in on Halloween. I had no idea what I was doing. I had even no idea what hotel I was staying at until I landed in L.A. What? And that just goes, that was my entire perspective on like, just go. Mm -hmm. Like someone's calling who you respect, just show up, stop asking questions. They want you stop creating more barriers or, or uncertainty for them to want you to work with. Just go. And that's, that's literally what he told me how much I was going to get paid. My flight was booked and I just showed up. Um, first night was at a multimillion dollar home here, uh, which is crazy to say now it's like a neighboring nearby neighborhood for me in LA uh, in Beverly Hills. And it's this $80 million home that I end up filming a hundred people all paid a hundred grand to be in the room. And a lot of them were people who I admired online, who I was a fan of and kind of, you know, I was like geeking out inside, <laughs> but no one had any idea. And I'm just kind of like casually recording and they interview Mark Wahlberg. That was a special. And then on top of that, every person was introduced by Bruce Buffer the famous, you know, uh, boxing announcer. And so that night ends. And then I kind of briefly told you the story of my name changing Saturday morning. We showed up to a mansion that had a plethora of CEOs speaking and then evening kicked off with Tyga performing Nick Cannon, DJing and Chris Tucker being the host. And then Sunday, uh, the Porsche, the Porsche, uh, experience, they call it here in LA where you're customizing a Porsche piece by piece. And then, you were able to be in the back with professional race car drivers to then try out every Porsche on a racetrack. And if you didn't want to do that, you could play basketball. They had Dennis Rodman, Magic Johnson, um, the, the professor, uh, a plethora of like basketball guys uh, just casually playing basketball with. <laughs> and then we would go inside to listen to Magic Johnson speak. And then Dan calls me into a room. He's like, come over here, follow me. And then I walk into a room with Chris Jenner. And there's, if there's anything I could tell you about, I've met a lot of people and there's something about her aura that sets her apart from everyone else. I think not only how she carries herself, um, but her attention to detail and focus, like even her presence, the only other person I can think of that I've been with and I've seen documented is like this Paris Hilton, where her head is chin up, shoulders back at all times. She's listening. She's watching. She's smiling. She is so all in on that moment of where she is and what's going on. Um, and so at the end of all that, uh, this was the moment. Um, throughout the entire weekend, I hadn't even spoke to Dan. Dan Fleischman, who's the person I'm referencing, who <laughs> was the co-host of this mastermind with Joel Marion. I see him at the tea station. So I walk up to him and I wanted to give him my thanks. And I said to him, Dan, I'm so thankful for you giving me this opportunity. The entire time, by the way, I was questioning why me? Like, why am I in this room? The entire weekend, I was like, why am I in this room? And uh, uh, he looks at me. I still remember this. He looks at me. He's like, you don't know this yet, but you're moving to L.A. And he just walks off. 
<laughs> and at that time, I was living in New York City. So I, I'm thinking to myself, this dude is nuts. I was like, what is he talking about? I was like, well, moving to LA. I was like, no way. I was like, I don't see myself here. Yeah, long behold, uh, you know, the amazing event that we all know that happened in 2020 comes around and, you know, that flipped, especially New York City upside down. And I, while I was down in Miami, Florida during that time, uh, I sent him a text like, hey, is that offer still on the table? And he said, yes, yeah, as, as from yesterday it is. And so I literally went home, packed my bags, and I was actually looking at the date yesterday. It was June 27th, 2020, that I moved in into a studio apartment here in Hollywood, California. And I've been here ever since. I've moved a couple of times, probably four, but... Um, <laughs> I'm um, now in what I like to describe as my dream apartment and kind of a uh, place that I, I, it feels home. Wow. It's amazing. I just want to pause and let you <laughs> absorb all that. That is yeah. incredible. What I'm hearing is you took a chance on yourself, the yeah. doubt, the fear, right? Those voices, they're loud. But for you to say, I'm going to trust my intuition and that I belong well, I wanna, in these I'm gonna, rooms. I'm going to add to this part because this yeah. part matters where so at 18, I did that. I mm -hmm. went to New York. I'm one of five siblings. My four other, three other siblings, my younger didn't really know what was going on. But the three, the three were like, why are you leaving? And I was like, I just have to leave. There was something in me that, you know, that I understand now. I call the Holy Spirit. Other may, people may call their gut, but I go. And then when I graduated university, I bet on doing this thing at the gym. Same feeling. I was like, I can't explain it. It just feels right. And it worked out. Now, when this opportunity came up with Dan, the truth is it didn't feel right for me. I'm sitting down in my living room, uh, the living room of my best friend, Lucas, and he was the one who I was bunkered down with during the pandemic, who essentially I was sleeping on his couch because I just didn't want to go back to New York and I wanted to stay in the Miami weather. And we were working out every day and kind of creating whatever that life was at that time. And I explained to him everything I said to you of who he was, what I did, and how I was still uncertain. I was like, I can't explain, but LA just doesn't feel right. And he looks at me and he says to me, your entire life, you've bet on yourself. You've always just jumped the ship without knowing what is to come. And the one time someone that sounds like he's very successful and he sounds like he cares and he wants to work with you, you're not going to go. And it was literally that moment, the next morning I flew out, mm -hmm. I went to New York and packed my bags. And, and, and I share that because a lot of the times, and this is going to lead into later on where we discuss my fitness journey, uh, people are in a cast of vision onto your life that you can't even see for yourself. It sometimes may be someone who's been around for a long time, or maybe someone who's been around for a day. But the idea is like, if someone sees something in you that you may question, the best thing you could do is try. Mm -hmm. Because then at that point, you could say to yourself, I tried it. And if it worked out, great. But if it didn't, I know I did try it and it wasn't for me. Mm. And I think that kind of ends up being my like ethos for life of just like just doing it. Mm. You have nothing to lose besides, you know, you betting on yourself and then saying to yourself, hey, even if you did fail or it didn't work out or, you know, same thing with business and personal relationships, like you could say, this is what I learned from it and this is why it didn't. Mm. So the next thing that comes up, you know what to look for or how to adjust. Wow. I feel like you are so young, but you could be a mentor for anybody, any age with all of your experience. And what I keep hearing and feeling is that up to that point where Dan wanted you to come out there was you had a lot of belief in yourself to enter these rooms and courage to enter these rooms. But sometimes you can't do it yourself and you do need your circle to say like, go and try. Right. And I think that's huge. Like you've mentioned this a few times, getting in these rooms. And I think when you think about who's around you and what you're unhappy with in your circumstances, sometimes it is important to find a new circle or find a new friend or find a new mentor or something like that. And so I would love for you to speak on you finding the circle you're in now, just the process of maybe weeding people out or maybe choosing certain rooms. Like how have you navigated that and gotten to where you're at when it comes to who you're surrounded by now? Today's episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Every episode of Ivy Unleash is dedicated to empowering you to take ownership of your health. And what it really comes down to is prioritizing your mental health. We've both seen the beauty and growth that therapy can bring and are thrilled to partner with BetterHelp to allow you the opportunity to feel heard and seen by a professional. 
The National Alliance on Mental Health reports that 155 million people live in a designated mental health professional shortage area, and BetterHelp is working to close that gap. I've personally used BetterHelp and loved it because it was all online, making it super convenient. The biggest piece for me was how affordable it is. I was able to choose the therapist that met my needs. I came in with wanting to work on childhood trauma and anxiety, and it was unbelievable to see how many options I had with all the different backgrounds of therapists. With BetterHelp, you have access to a network of over 30,000 licensed and experienced therapists. Therapy is all about deepening your self-awareness. And sometimes we can't see our own patterns and behaviors until we talk them out and get an unbiased perspective. It's really nice to have someone who doesn't know you and has the professional background to help you thrive in your daily life. It has made the world of a difference with every relationship in my life, including the one with myself. To get started, all you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire about your needs and preferences and choose your therapist out of the options they give you. You can talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable, whether it's via text, chat, phone, or video call. Also, you can switch therapists at no additional charge until you find the right fit for you. The best investment you can make is in yourself. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash gold ivy. That's better, dot com slash gold ivy. Take the first step to inner peace and freedom today. Dre, tell the people as fast as you can why Move With Gold Ivy is the last mind-body fitness program they'll ever have to buy and how women are finally getting the transformation they're looking for. I love a challenge. Let's go. Two big things. One, Move provides a fun atmosphere to work out in that actually gets you excited to show up and follow through with your goals. Not only is there an element of fun, but we've carefully curated a program that makes it as easy as possible for women to take care of themselves. And two, a MOVE membership addresses every aspect of your health, mind and body. Our MOVE members are getting the physical transformation they've been hoping for and feeling like they've finally found the group that motivates them on a daily basis. What did I miss? As a MOVE member, you receive a weekly workout plan, weekly live or Zoom workouts, an on-demand workout library, transformational quarterly reset challenges, monthly coaching calls, monthly masterminds with health experts, and a private group of motivated members for support and accountability. It's ready for you when you're ready to boost your metabolism, confidence, and feel your absolute best. Join MOVE or learn more by clicking the link in the show notes, Click in the link in our bio on Instagram, Facebook, or TikTok, or by messaging us on any social channel at Gold Ivy Health Co. It's your time. Move for your health, move for your confidence, move for your mental clarity, move with Gold Ivy. It, it's funny you asked that these two days ago. I, was, um, I do a lot of reflection now. More than I, I pray more than ever, and I meditate or reflect more than ever in my life today. And I was just asking myself that question two days ago, not in the regards of how I get into the rooms, but in regards of like, who are the people in my life today, and how that's changed. What I've seen for me, it's it's changed every four years, um, due to my own habits, due to my surroundings. You know, they say there's the seven levels of friendship. Uh, two of the biggest ones are frequency and proximity. Um, you know, the proximity of your neighbor, you know, you may not, you know, your friends with him because he's your neighbor. Um, and another friendship is the frequency, your coworker, you see them six days a week. And so you have that um, kind of conversation. And, and for me, I've realized that similar to life is like you evolve, your interests change, your, your focuses change. And uh, for me, I've kind of, a lot of it has been my friendships due to surroundings I've seen. Um, and also how my dad has raised me is that like, there's not, where a lot of times I've seen in society, we're put into boxes, right? Like, hey, if you look a certain way, if you talk a certain way, you dress a certain way, they assume you're this person. Um, and, and for me growing up, especially in Miami, being a uh, first generation Hispanic, uh, where so, there was a lot of times where I realized looking back, I had <clears throat> I had questioned myself a lot of times because I was in rooms that I was the minority. I was like always in a Hispanic kind of setting throughout university. I was a minority. I went to predominantly um, Haitian high school. And then again, when I was in university, I was like the school was like 80, 90 percent Caucasian. I look Caucasian, but I'm Hispanic. Right. And then my roommates were Hispanic. Um, and and th my whole point of leading to this is that. 
I always tried to place myself in rooms and doing things that I felt that served me or like helped me in my life to like elevate it. So the idea was I was never the person in university that hung out at the bar. Like I just wasn't the happy hour guy. That wasn't me. I was the guy that was like, let's go play basketball. I was the guy like, let's go to the gym. I was the guy that, hey, I couldn't be a part of, I literally did this. I couldn't, I couldn't make, they had um, the marketing club. I was the business management major and the marketing club had all their slots positions and I wanted to lead a group. Like I wanted to be a president or vice president of a group. And then I got wind that the management club hasn't been activated in years. So overnight, I was the president. <laughs> <laughs> But the idea was like, I was always someone who, when I saw something that made me curious, I just jumped into it. And so that I didn't care who was with me or what was going on, but I just knew why I was doing it. Another thing was my senior year, I it was in my heart to lead a group for a mission trip. And so I applied to lead a group to then go to Parisburg, Pennsylvania and build homes with Habitat for Humanity. And the reason I'm describing all these experiences is because they came with all different people. And so it was never for me, I never thought to myself like, oh, I'm doing this for these people. It was really just my genuine curiosity of wanting to do something that I felt that was good and or that I knew was right. And that ended up being kind of like my, what I see now is like my deep network of friends from so many different backgrounds is, is if you're a good person and you have a good intention with what you're doing, I'm down. Black, white, purple, green, orange. I don't care where you're from. I don't mind. I love culture. I love people. I definitely love food. And so it's like those things that all kind of come together. It's like that avatar, whoever that person is on any project or whatever circle it may be in. Uh, for me, I, I didn't look at it like that. I just kind of saw it as, as I was going through life, I knew I was going to encounter so many different people. Growing up in Miami, it was predominantly Hispanic. Being in New York, it's a melting pot of the world. Um, and I always now understand that I get a lot of my compassion from my dad who would always push me to be in weird rooms, which when I was growing up, I didn't understand why I was like, why am I always the minority? Why is, why is every kid? I still remember when I was younger, I was always, uh, I was raised in a park to play basketball that was predominantly black. And I used to want to shave my head because I had long hair down to my shoulders and I would, my sister, my family, like, no, you're not doing it. It's like, but everyone else has short hair. <laughs> And so those questions and curiosities of my environments were always consistent throughout my life, which now growing up and seeing, I was like, I thank my dad all the time that he did that to me because now I could talk to everyone and anyone because of him and that drive of like opportunity. And somehow I always realized this is one of my biggest networking tips. When you meet someone, find something immediately to connect on them with. Don't lie about it. Be authentic. Be real. My biggest Uh, leverage is that I was able to grow up in Miami, live in New York and now in LA. Somehow there's always a tie. Someone says, oh, I love Miami. It's a great <laughs> vacation spot. Oh, it's my dream to go to New York. I've been there a handful of times. Oh, the, the LA weather is amazing. How is that? And so I use that as my connection to humans. And then it leads into anything else that I know eventually because of my life experience, I somehow either have done it, been to it, or met someone who's leading it that then I say, hey, there's that connection story. Um, because ultimately that's what people love. They love a great story. When you tell content, when you talk about, when you tell people, when you're sitting over dinners, when you're chatting with friends like this is you tell a great story. It builds connection and deeper, meaningful relationships. Oh, I love that. And something we have in connection, Roger, is the love for hot yoga. <laughs> yeah. And I want to get into your fitness journey. Yeah. About six months ago, you made a decision to yeah. walk away from a few things and yeah. focus on a few different things. So let's talk about right. that. What inspired that decision? So, um, it was, so there's a couple things. So the date was, it was February 15th. So, so, so you want to talk about something, letting go of drinking. My memory now is insane. <laughs> like I, I remember dates and moments in times. So it was February 15th, 2024. And I was, I was having one of those days Um, and a, a friend of mine, I had called him and I was like, I just wanted to get out of the house. And we did the typical, you know, I live in Hollywood and the iconic uh, Runyon hike, something that I, I'm obsessed with and I love to do. And I, the fact that I have access to it, I'm so thankful and grateful about. And he has two dogs. So I was like a mix of hanging out with him and his dogs. I was like, I just need to go on a hike. And he's like, all right, let's do it. While we're on this hike, I run into a female friend um, who, again, if you, once you get to know me, I'm very, 
you know, extroverted. So if you, if I don't say hi and a smile or kind of thing, something's off. And I've also learned I'm very expressive. So people know when I'm off and I say hi to her in passing very fast. And she then texts me, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm good. She's like, okay, I'm just throwing it out there. If you would like, I'm going to hot yoga after this hike. She sends me the address. She's like, just come, it'll be fun. And she's someone who's been doing it for a long time. I've seen her. And it was one of those things like, oh, I'm not a hot yoga guy. I was like, I considered myself to, you know, be someone very athletic. I love to box. I love to run. Um, I would lift weights every now and then, not consistently. But I was like, I'm not a hot yoga guy. Uh, and then something in me was like, you know what? What hurts to go and give it a try? It was nearby. And I, I tell her all the time, that was the day that I felt like I had a massive awakening in my life. Because I still remember exiting that class and sitting on the bench and just feeling so many different feelings, not only with myself of how being exhausted I was, but really feeling stuff that I've never felt before through breathing that I had to do and the heat that I had to go through while I was in that class. Uh, that led me to February 23rd being the day that I told myself I would never drink, smoke, have fast food or soda again in my life. In your life? In my life, yeah. Wow, that's a big, bold statement. And so yeah. now it's been how many months? Half a Six year? Months and a week. Yeah, half a year. And so, I mean, you've talked about these beautiful connections and networking, but we know from giving up alcohol, whether it's for a month or yeah. however many days, yeah. that that can come with some darkness, some clarity, yeah. some letting go, some shedding, lots of things. And so, how has yeah. that been for you with your circle, with this? knew you with, I mean, you're really into fitness and yeah. and not drinking. I mean, it can make some big changes. Well, yeah. And even when, you know, prior to when we started the podcast, you said we met a year ago. I was like, I tell people that if you met me any previous to six months ago, that person's dead. <laughs> that guy that, you know, the, the extent of what I mean by that is the extent of the, the social person that you saw of what he considered to be fun. I don't do anymore. And the, the conversations of whatever that was, it's just not me anymore. I'm the friend that I always tell people and I've had conversations with people that that's how they identified me of, you know, being that social and being outside. And so I want to lead into this kind of expressing two things. Number one is that in life, when you grow up, you're we're told what to do. We're told what to wear by our parents. We're told what to school to go to. And this is not technically on to your 18 that you make your own decisions. And at that point, funny enough, the world still puts you in a box depending what school you go to, who you're with, how you express yourself online. People then have a viewpoint of you. They identify you in a certain way that only they see you in. And so if people meet you in a certain state in your life, it becomes very difficult for them to alter your their perception of you because they've seen you in this limelight of being example for me someone who would love to party, someone who I wouldn't have a shot, I would have shots. You know what I mean? Like I was that guy. And so if they had the identity of you because of you deciding to make those choices, for them to see you in the opposite light becomes very, very difficult. And naturally, in human nature, it's not even the person itself, they're going to doubt you. They're, there's no way you're going to go sober for more than a week. There's no way that you're going to go to the gym every day. There's no way you're going to do hot yoga every day. <laughs> And it's not, this is, I really is a big lesson when someone's choosing to what I then understood from friends of like, you tell them at the beginning, hey, I'm doing a cleanse, you know, the decision to not drink for X period of time or to do this for yourself. It's what you say and how you say it. It's not saying, hey, I don't drink anymore. Hey, that's really bad. You should stop drinking. You like down, you make the group feel uncomfortable by you choosing to live your life a certain way. I really believe it's the verbiage that you have with someone to then clarify why you're doing it and creating intent behind why you're doing it, which leads to the beginning part of when I told you my career, my family had uncertainty in me because I couldn't create declaration in my own life of why I was doing it. And so I think it's really important when you make that decision to not drink for 30 days, 60 days or your life, you figure out three to five things that give you purpose and reminding you why you're not doing it anymore. For me, when I first started, I didn't have a date. I was just like, let me try for 30. Like what would happen? There was someone uh, in my life. And this is the point where I talked about someone casting a vision into your life. It was December 16, 2023. 
it was the end of the world's largest tour drive we, we did. We did 11 cities in 15 days, over a quarter million toys gifted out to kids all throughout the country from every major city. And so we're in Las Vegas. We're, it's the wrap up. We're going to dinner. Uh, his name is Vince Ritchie. He's the co-founder of Hubble Studios and also Trina's for Kids, which is the nonprofit that we partner with when doing their back to school drive, Thanksgiving food drive and toy drive. And I had no personal relationship with him. It was always through business. Hi, how are you showing up, taking videos, pictures and all that. And he asked me to come into his room before we head out. And he sits me down and, and bluntly tells me like, hey, you live a good life. I've been watching you, how you maneuver. You know, we'll go out to these toy drives. You'll go out to dinner. You'll go out really late. And he's like, what's more impressive, and this is how I was maintaining it, is that like I never missed work. So like I would party till 2, 3 a.m., but I would still show up at 8 a.m. And so he's like, I don't know how you're doing it, but you're doing it. And 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 that's fine. And you could live this okay, mediocre life of yours of uh, playing this. He kind of he essentially casted out my life. He was like, you're doing this for this amount of time. You'll be Dan's guy for X. You'll be seen as cool. You'll be in the rooms. You'll meet the right people. And he's like, but I don't see that for you. He's like, I just don't. I feel like I've, I've seen your personality. I've seen you maneuver. I've seen you walk. I've seen you talk to people. And I think you're way bigger than just someone holding a camera behind Dan. I think you should be doing, you know, his exact joke in the moment was, I see you hosting Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> and so that the idea wasn't the being the host, but the idea of being someone that is surrounded by other high-level people who are talking to other high-level people and really doing more for life. And he's like, you're just choosing to make your life a lot more harder by making these small changes that you can make in your life by choosing not to drink as often, by choosing to sleep more, by choosing to work out. Like he even bluntly told me, he goes, if you took off your shirt right now, would you be happy with yourself? And I was like, and I was like, I don't know what type of question is that. I was like, <laughs> you want me to take off my shirt? I was like, yeah. I was like, uh, but I knew what he was getting at, which is the idea. And I told him no. And he's like, all right. He's like, look, look at that. He's like, you're. He's like, how old are you? And I was like, 29. He's like, you're 29. You're arguably, you're supposed to be in the best shape of your life and you're not even happy with your, your own self. He's like, you're single and you don't have kids. You have no excuse. And so by the end of the, the conversation, truthfully, in my head, I'm like, this dude's nuts. F this dude. I don't, you know, I don't know why he spoke to me like this. I have no, you know, again, bias of like, why? Mm -hmm. It took me a while. Um, and, and I had real, you know, it was about two months, yeah, February 23rd. Where then it clicked, you know, we have that moment. It was not that moment um, when I reflected on my birthday on January 23rd. That was a part of it, uh, but it still wasn't all in. And it was February 23rd that I said, I was like, you know what? Um, I got to do this. I want to, I want, I was curious for myself of like, what would happen if I decided to go all in on myself? And when I outlined the five things, I was like, why am I doing this? Number one is my relationship with God. I, I grew up a Catholic. I was raised a Catholic. My, one of my closest friends in high school was a priest. Um, I even thought about it at one point in my life. Then I went to a Catholic university. It was the same type of thing. I was leading mission trips. I was leading mission groups. I was doing a ton of community service. Like it was always in my heart and God was always in my life. And then when I moved to LA, I faded from it. And then I also realized, you know, I was using and consuming things that were making it what I viewed as a band-aid to my relationship and connection with him. So I was looking for answers, but I was numbing and hearing his voice by drinking. I was numbing and hearing, and I couldn't, I was like, oh, let me use mushrooms to talk to God. It's like, not anyone, I'm not against anyone that uses anything to you know, have any type of relationship, but just for me and my story in my life, I realized I kept using other things to just directly go to the source. I had, I was thinking that I had to consume things or do things to be able to talk to him or hear him. When in reality, I was just creating a bigger, bigger gap to, for him, for me to be able to listen, for me to be able to see the things that he had in my life or kind of how I was maneuvering. Um, and then most importantly, I was, I'm 30 years old and single. And I realized that I was consistently seeing friction in my personal relationships. I wasn't quote unquote looking for love. As we all know, when you look for it, you never find it. <laughs> but the idea was that I was always curious. So I was always meeting girls and I was like, man, there was always something off. There was always something there and there. And then when I went to the root of it years, years ago, I had someone call me out on this. Uh, I had a close to a very, very bare minimal relationship with my mom. And, you know, I read something that the best and most unconditional love, you can get it from your mom. And she was always there ready to give it to me. And so on my birthday, I just forgave her. And I said, hey, like everything you've done and, you know, what you did, I don't want to talk about it anymore. It's done. Um, I, I truly believe when I forgave her, 
in that moment, I, I truly understood in that moment. I was like, she's going to be such a great grandmother to my kids because I'm just thinking about my future at that point of like, what am I doing today? That's going to thank myself tomorrow. I was so good at doing things that were quick dopamine hits. Like I was so good at that. And then later feeling terrible. And then it was this mindset that I told myself today. I was like, what if I start doing things that hurt me, which are running, lifting weights in the moment and that later make me feel good. And so that's like the reverse psychology. I always tell myself of like that, that switch. And so the five things, number one, being my relationship with God, my relationship, what I titled my family, but in reality was my mom. Uh, my relationship with my fitness, my relationship with my finances, and lastly, the relationship with myself. I was so good at telling myself, <laughs> this is going to sound crazy, but when I had moments that would people would question of like, yo, let's do this. I'd be like, YOLO, <laughs> let's do it. I was like, all right, let's go. Like, I was that friend you would call? They'd be like, let's go to Paris tomorrow. I'd be like, I'm down. <laughs> like, I, you know, I was like, always just that friend, you know? And uh, it's a great way to live and it's a great way to experience a lot of things. Um, but it also was very short-sighted, um, which I realized through my personal relationships this is a really deep metaphor. I can't remember where I read it or where I saw it, but when I would have someone in my life who I was interested in, but I then knew she wasn't the one for me, I would still have her around. Uh, a friend said this to me or I just heard it. I was like, how are you ever going to find the one when you have the seat taken, mm. that person that you think is meant for you, that already knows not, is sitting at the chair next to you and you're not even giving the next girl a chance to sit next to you because she's walking up to the table and the seat's taken. And so when I heard that, that kind of kind of got my mind going of, okay, like, what am I really doing? How am I doing things that not only my personal fitness journey that will thank me tomorrow, but also my personal life of like, I've realized I aspire to be a dad. There's no... Like that feeling of being a dad, like I know I want to be a dad and I know I want to bring life into this world and I want to have not only like my little minions running around, but the idea of like that sense of purpose and, and, and kind of life. I know I want that for my future, but I also know that the, my habits and things that I used to do have no business with my future self. It just, they just totally not aligned and curated together um with that also being said at the time uh we i got the news uh around that point that dan who's i consider a mentor and someone i aspire to become he gives me the news that his girlfriend at the time is pregnant and that triggered another thing in my head where i was like i never wanted him to ever question me living his daughter with me mm -hmm. i i'm someone who's very close to him and i was like that's your circle right it's like that idea of, you know, I don't publicly share, but there was a lot of family members in my family that had issues with drugs and alcohol. And I would witness the feud within the family of like, the idea of like, can we really leave them with the kids? Mm -hmm. Is that a good thing? Mm -hmm. And I knew I had full control of, over that. And so I also declared and I told him and his girlfriend, I was like, I want you guys to know like a big eco within this is like, I never want you to question leaving me with her. I never want you to question when you're going on stage, am I able to take care of the baby on my chest? You know, like I never wanted to leave that up to chance. And and, and again, gripping our reference earlier and not pointing the finger anymore, saying to myself, what do I have control over? What I can I do for me? And how can I show up for myself that then helps everyone else and kind of shows up for them? I think that's, the answer to that question I know it led to so many different things but <laughs> I love it it's beautiful it sounds like you getting clarity on that vision has allowed you to keep that commitment to yourself because yeah. it's easy to pick up the bottle to go out with friends there's that yeah. voice in your head of just do it it's fine it doesn't really matter it's just wondering no. who the heck cares so would you say that that absolute clarity has what's helped you or is there something else that's really helped too yeah I just have so much conviction now on you know, I'm not dating, I'm looking for a wife, you know, I'm not, you know, I, I just, when Vince saw something in me that I couldn't see in myself, that's when I started to, I heard it on a woman's panel, Dan hosted here in LA. And one of the girls on the panel was talking about how we need to romanticize your life. And how important that is to romanticize your life. 
And in time, I'm like, that's a little weird. I was like, what? I was like, well, that sounds like a hopeless romantic, you know? <laughs> and she referenced the example she gave was her being stuck in traffic on the 405. And she was like, most people, as I looked left and right, were pissed. Me, I decided to put on my favorite song and put the windows down and sing. She's like, you decide how, you know, you live your life and what you do and kind of what you see for the future. She's like, no matter what, I had to go on this path. And no matter what, I had to come here. And so I could either come and go into that space and, and, and have a positive outlook on it, or I could have been mad. And so I, I do that a lot with my life now, where I say to myself, am I doing things that my future self will think? I do that a lot. And I do that through challenging myself through hot yoga. <laughs> I do that through strength training, lifting weights. I do that through now I became obsessed with just running um, and, and just being outside and being in the sun. And uh, another thing has been through like friendships, like creating experiences or moments together um, where, you know, I don't, you know, I'm not at the nightclub anymore. I'm not at the hookah lounge anymore. I'm not that character, that avatar of what was me. Um, but I've also realized because I have all this energies that I need to exert it somewhere else. <laughs> like I used to, this is another thing at the beginning, you, when you talk about questioning yourself, those first two weeks, I'm looking at it right now, there's a bench that I have in my living room. And after hot yoga, those first, I went to hot yoga 28 out of the first 30 days. And the only reason I missed the two days is because we had to go to Dallas for Aspire. And I even flew back earlier to walk straight into a class. <laughs> and those two weeks was like death. That out of body experience of like, no, just a habit. It was one, breaking the habits, but two, the urgencies to do the things that I used to do. And it was just, I kept questioning, like, why? Like, why am I really doing this, you know? But that's why I think it's so important that when you're doing something so brand new that requires massive change, is that a lot of those people that were in your past life, like, you just can't entertain anymore. And you have to convert or find those new people through your new activities. And a lot of times, too, which is funny and crazy to think now, is like, I'm that person for a lot of people now. And just two days ago, when well, three days ago, or Friday, when it was my six month anniversary, I had someone who I met when I first moved to LA. And he had known me as the party guy. And I didn't know we were connected on social, and that he was following me. And because we were always text. And he sends me essentially like this two paragraph text of saying, Hey, man, like, congratulations, I've seen been watching you everything that you've been doing and posting. But most importantly, I want you to know, I'm 12 days sober because of you. And I get those messages now more than ever. And I, at first, I didn't want to vocalize my journey uh, because I was in the phase of like, I need to do it. I can't talk because I, you know, like everyone else, we have moments and do things that we talk about it way before we've done it. And I've also learned there's something that in the brain, that psychology speaking, that by you expressing to others of what you're doing or what you aspire to do you then have a sense of accomplishment without even having done anything. Mm. And so for me, I then just said, I just need to do the work. I just need to show up. And I became obsessed. Like I would go to yoga every day, then fitness training and then run. And then at the beginning, referencing the change, like a lot of people in my circle were like, dude, you're doing too much now. You're working out too much. You're going to hot yoga too much. And then I just didn't listen to them. I was like, no, I needed to do that because I needed it for me. Um, and I also realized that my attention and focus had to go somewhere else. And so by doing that over and over the saying of like, now it becomes like, if I don't work out, if I don't run, I'm having a weird day. Mm -hmm. If I'm not running outside, I'm like, all right, if it's been like two, three o'clock and I haven't moved, I'm like, oh, this is a little weird. I need to go for a run, um, where your body adapts to that. And then like everything else, you know, I started to see the changes in my body where I'm like, all right, this is making sense now where at the beginning, it's funny because when I was doing hot yoga and I have the, especially the opening video of my six month journey, like at that point, I thought I was in shape. Like I really <laughs> did. And, and it's funny because now just seeing that and where I am today, of uh, I was like, I was nowhere near it, but I was on the path. And I think that's the part that's so cool that when you start to document it and you start to express what you're doing, the right people start showing up. And over time, when you hit certain markers that people find inspiring or find incredible, you then become that light for, it's not even like the hundreds of thousands, you know, social media, we get so caught up with the numbers. 
But the idea of like the one, like I think about that now. It's like, who today can I help? Just one. Mm -hmm. Just one person that texts me, that calls me. Hey, I need your help. Hey, I want to talk. I was like, I'm down. I'll jump on the phone with you. Hey, I'll talk to you. Hey, I'll send you this message. Hey, like that one just every day. And it becomes like just a compounding thing. What I've also realized, Dan's superpower of relationships being the fast forward button to life, which is like, it always seems like there is what it what is that every day he's getting opportunity. But it's because when I've learned from him, he's like, yeah, 10 years ago, I helped him with this. Or three years ago, it was this. Two years ago, it was that. Four, and it just happened today. So then the things that he was doing 5, 10, 20 years ago, I'm just seeing the effects of it today because of that moment. And it was just compounding of humans and time. That's all it is. It's just numbers and time. Like, how many good things do you do for the world that then later may or may not come back? But the ideas like that are showing up for you in different ways. Yeah. Wow. And I think just the clarity that you have, like anything you're speaking about, it's so genuine. And like you said, you've really reflected on things. You can feel it. Like you are very clear on what you're doing, the direction you're going, that you're helping people, who you're connecting with. I mean, it is like, I don't even know how to say it besides just clarity. It feels so clear what you're doing and yeah. why you're doing it. And when I picture that video, I felt the same way where I was like, I was following him six months ago and I totally felt like you were in shape when you were doing those first pictures and videos. And so it's been so fun to watch the journey and you've been shifting from behind the camera to in front of the camera, um, right. which thank God, cause you look good <laughs> and you've got a lot of, you've got a lot of wisdom to share. Mm -hmm. And so I'm really excited for this next chapter for you. And I would love for you to tell our listeners, what you're doing now and yeah. how they can find you and the wisdom that you're starting to share so that they can be along for the ride yeah. or so work with you. When, when I, when I reference like the casting of vision onto my life, one of the things was because I decided to, you know, create clarity in my life by choosing not to drink because I believe alcohol is poison. And it just really, it becomes a, when you're looking for answers in your life and, and where to go, when you're consuming and think of your body, I view my body as a Porsche car that I love. <laughs> so you're consuming things that are making it a lot more difficult for it to go to the 120, 140 that we all know it can't. And so one of those things was when I started, um, I still remember I was in Dubai this year for New Year's and it was December 30th and I was sat next to someone who we would be around in a lot of the same rooms, <clears throat> but we'd never speak one-on-one. -on -one. Same type of lingo. Um, he sits next to me and this is where I believe God sends messengers throughout your life <clears throat> to speak to you. And it's either you could acknowledge it or ignore it. And so he sat next to me and right off the rip had no remorse. And he goes, dude, why aren't you like really rich and ripped? And I'm like, Hmm, interesting. So <laughs> I, I, I always, I always, when I listen to you, I allow them. If you really ever want, so if you want answers or you want someone to talk, talk, just listen, you don't even have to say anything. A lot of times people will just say everything and you don't even have to ask. Um, but in that question, in that moment, I said, what do you mean by that? And so then he goes on to tell us, he's like, well, he's like, he started analyzing. He's like, I've been watching you for X amount of time. You know, we're always in the same rooms. And also he's someone that is a big part too. If someone's going to cast a vision onto your life, they either, either you better look up to him or they've done it or doing it. Because if not, that's just, now you're just wasting your time. That's just like, you know, that's like taking advice from an overweight trainer on how to eat good. It's like, I'm sorry, I'm not, you're not doing it. You don't look like someone who is, so I'm not going to listen to you, right? It's like getting millionaire advice from your cousin who has a startup. So it's <laughs> like, it doesn't make sense. He is someone that was having success in his business and, you know, because I've seen him and he was also ripped. So he's then pushing onto me a concept that he's applied in his own life that he sees for me. Um, and he goes, he references, uh, I bring it up to me starting my own workshops and he's like, yeah, man, I totally see it. It makes sense. You have social credibility. You've been doing it for X amount of years. You have the right people, the right network. You have a good following. Like, it just makes sense. Time and time goes by around that time in February. I tell him about, like, my journey. He tells me what books to start reading. Same thing. And then he says to me, he goes, dude, I actually was expressing my gratitude about that dinner, how great our conversation was to ex-CEO. And he actually told me, you've been talking about doing these workshops for, like, four years now. And he's like, oh, he's never going to do it. He's just been talking about it. And that's what triggered me to then, you know, get me going with my own workshops, the content CEO vision workshops, which my first one was here in LA inside my apartment. I had eight people show up 
And out of those eight people, not one person was local. And that's what triggered me to think, okay, I could do this in other cities. I go from every, for the next four months, I do one a month. Um, I do, I go from Miami or LA from eight people, Miami to 40, uh, Dallas, Texas is two day, we had 24 and then, uh, New York city, we had 27. So I'm averaging about 24 workshop. And during that time, uh, I started to experience a couple things. Number one was leadership. It was realizing, okay, I'm living my life in a certain way. Um, that's creating authority for myself. Um, but it's also pushing me to be uncomfortable by having deep and meaningful conversations with an audience. And the biggest part, which I've realized is my favorite part, and I always document it because it's happened, where I tell people right before lunch, I make it two hours, and I say, if you came with someone, get away from them. These are the moments that have changed my life, where it's never that one person or that connection. It's a relationship that you build with someone that you never know may apply today, tomorrow, or a year from now. Say your name, what you do, and find out what way can you show up for each other. It may not be now, but get their name and number and just save it because you never know. And so if you look at my store, my reels, I always have that one video where I see people having conversation and it's like deep conversations mm -hmm. where most of the time people forget to even grab lunch. <laughs> and that part for me is my favorite part because then I realize this is way bigger than me. Like, yes, I was the conduit. I was the nucleus to everyone right now. But the idea is like, I've seen it. I've literally seen girls go on vacations. I've seen people already do businesses together. I've seen when I see those things, I'm like, that is life, like creating meaning out of life through relationships and doing things way bigger. Um, so through that, I do that for the past four months. I decided to take August um, for a break. You know, it's the month that most people are travel, schools getting back in, um, and and people's attentions are just in different places. Um, and yes. so through all that, I'm going to break <laughs> the news here on this on this podcast is that uh, last week Monday, um, I get a text from Dan. Um, I share this because this is important for just spiritual believers. That morning, um, I was asking God, I was like, hey, I'm on this deep, deep journey with myself. And I know that working for Dan is not going to, like for me, it's not that I'm not going to work for him, but I just know there needs to be something bigger. There needs to be something more, but I just didn't know what. And so I was like, I can't jump ship from someone who I love, adore, and respect that doesn't feel right. And I was like, I love my current situation. I love my relationship with him, my business. I was like, everything going on. I was like, it's great. So I was like, leaving just doesn't seem right. But also there was something in me that there needs to be a change. There needs to be something more. Kid you not, I screenshotted it. It was like, he texted me at 1138 Monday saying phone call. And in the past, when he sends a text or kind of phone, it's usually you know not the best news or something's going on that I need to be aware of. So like, hey, we're going over here. We need to go. So I'm like kind of going into the call like, dang, what's going on? And right off the rip, I was walking. I love, you know, I don't do coffee shop. I just have a CVS and I just like to walk to the CVS and kind of, you know, just the thing I do. And I'm walking to the CVS. I'm about to walk in and he just casually says, he's like, hey, I have this, this company I was aware of, this online video editing company I'm partnering with. I've been hearing him talk about it. I've seen, I've heard the phone calls. I've heard the conversations. Um, and he goes, I think it's only right that I name you CEO. He's like, do you want to be CEO? And I'm like, truthfully, my direct answer, I'm like, uh, I guess <laughs> like, I couldn't even process what he was saying to me because it was like where I was, what it just came out of left field for me. I was not expecting that. And he goes, it just makes sense where you're at in your life of like how you've dedicated yourself with fitness, how you've led these events. And he's like, it just makes sense that content CEO is a real CEO of a company that's online video editing. And um, when he kind of framed it like that, I was like, yeah. Um, and this is why I think it's so important too, of like you're bringing people with you. Um, during that time, when I started my, when I did my first workshop, someone showed up in my life who I met seven years ago in New York City on a project. And he hit me up and he's like, hey, man, I see what you're doing. I want to be a part of your content workshops. I'm like, dude, I don't have money. Like, I'm just starting out. He's like, I'll just sh I'll show up and shoot for free. I'll film for free. I'm like, okay, cool. That works for me. Showed up with a good attitude, good vibes. And over the past month, he's became my partner on these workshops. And I directly said to Dan, I was like, yeah, I'm in. But I was like, I need Freddie to be a part of this. Like, I need him to be with me on this journey because it just makes sense. And he's someone who, again, bridging kind of like life moments, alignment, you hear opportunity, the same consistency in my words, is that he was going through a massive change and he needed something, you know, like me, almost like, what's the next thing? Um, and he's like, yeah, of course. He's like, done, name him COO. I'm like, cool. 
And so then in a matter of seconds, I text Freddie and I call him, I was like, yo, um, you're CEO of a new company. He's like, what? <laughs> I was like, yeah. I was like, told him the whole thing. He's like, dude, this makes sense. In alignment. And I say spiritually because I was questioning like, what's next? What's next? What's next? I was filming all these courses and I never, as anyone who throws events and as you guys, you know, attend, there's always an offer. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you, people are already sipping on the tea. How do you get them to, you know, continue or to learn from you, to hear from you? And also ultimately, how do you make more money from the people in the room? And it never felt right for me because I'm, I guess I'm a purist in this way of like, I was just so happy people paid me to be in the room already. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to over, I wanted people always to leave my room and say, dang, I would have paid more. The people I've met, the relationships I made were so worth it. That's what I always wanted the takeaway to be. So at the end of the last two, I never, like Freddie had set it up for me to do an long, uh, offer. And I was like, no, we're not doing it. No, we're not doing it. I was like, because the last people were always emotional people for me. So I was like half crying, half happy, half thankful. And I'm like, I'm not going to be like, hey, thank you guys so much for coming. Buy this for $9.99. I was like, no, it just <laughs> didn't feel right for me. Um, it, it just didn't. And so now going into this, I learned that the online overseas editors that we have, we need to put them through a course to learn my editing style. And that's the thing I've had in my bank sitting, mm -hmm. but I just didn't know who it was for. And so I think that's just so important. The saying Jen always reminds me or mutual how we met the event is that the Steve Jobs saying you can only connect your life. The dots only make sense when you look backwards. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, especially today, I'm even getting used to saying it because it's just like in the moment while I was doing the thing and everyone seeing me like I'm thriving. And I think like there's so much uncertainty with me even still today of like, what does tomorrow look like? Why am I doing this? How am I doing it? Even though from the outside looking, yes, I'm doing the work and yes, I'm showing up and yes, I have community and yes, I have love and yes, I feel so blessed and yes, I have work. But the idea is like, no one knows what's going on. Like, <laughs> no one knows. No one knows what tomorrow looks like. Like we're all figuring it out. Like we really are. But the idea and the whole thing of me saying this is the idea is like when you're going into something that's so brand new and you're and you're excited, no one really knows what tomorrow looks like. But if you're doing it with the right people and you have your right intention with it and you know you're showing up to the best that you could show up, things start weaving themselves out. People start stepping back and new people step in. And so let it be in your business life and your personal life. What I've learned for me today being a sweet young age of 30 mm -hmm. and having what I say massive transformation over the past six months is that we all go through life. And I think that's what makes life so beautiful is like the whole boom, boom, mm -hmm. boom, boom. I used to then think to myself, wow, what's bad? What's up? It's so good. Something bad's going to happen. But wait, by me having that moment, it's me realizing that's how much more I appreciate the good and or something that I learned that makes sense and that's meaningful. And that Jordan Peterson says is like, life isn't all about the beaches and margaritas. He's like, life is how you greet your wife when you walk in the door, how you hug your children when you're in the house, how you talk to your friends, how you check in on people. And I've realized for me, that's like the ethos of life for me is like that. If I show up to the best that I could show up, by me choosing not to drink and not smoking, by me putting the right stuff into my body, I've realized now I have a run. I partnered with a run club. I force my friends Sunday mornings now to run with me. And then I get a group at averages from three to five people who go to church with me. And then we go to church. And then this past Sunday, I had a group, new group of friends come together and we all have breakfast together. It's like the whole bottom thing of it was me choosing to show up for myself, that then all these other things happened in my life that literally altered people's days, weeks, or maybe even friendships. Yeah, man, like I'm all in, like, I'm never going to not, I'm not just not going to do that anymore because it just doesn't help. And it's not serving anyone. It's the ripple effect of you prioritizing you, mind, yeah. body, spirit, knowing that it's not selfish, but yeah. you taking care of you, you're setting other people free. That's powerful. And I know this is your story and your journey, but it is so powerful. I have cried like 10 times sitting here I because caught, it's... I caught myself and I was, I was like... Ugh. It's just like, so meaningful. Wrong. Like <laughs> everything you're saying is like <laughs> truly the meaning of life. It's like finding your passion, finding your purpose, finding your people, mm -hmm. taking care of your vessel, you know, so that you can show up. Like I'm so emotional because when I hear things I want my kids to hear, I, this happens mm -hmm. to me. And I have three little ones and I'm so happy they get to listen to this episode at some point in their life. <laughs> yeah. 
because you're such a great influence on the world and can just tell you care so much about people. So I'm so happy for you and your circle because I'm sure they were like, Roger's on fire, man. <laughs> He's <Right>. on <laughs> That's fire. The thing I keep getting. You know, it's funny in saying that. It's like, yeah, people tell me that. And it's like, even when I did my six month transformation video that day, I was with friends. And they're like, how does that feel getting that feedback? Mm-hmm. And I was like, bluntly, like zero, because a lot of those people weren't even checking in on me. So it's no. like, I was doing that for me. Like there wasn't yeah. a lot of the times in my life, I was always doing things for attention of this or that. And I was like, this is the one time like, yeah, I was just no one's running for me. No one's picking up the weights. No one when I was traveling and still showing up to the gym at midnight, that was me. So it's like the idea of like me deciding to then switch it and like make it about other no, it's like no, just just focus on me and do what I have to do and everything else kind of just it just works itself out and the right people start to show up. And I even here I'll sh- I'll share this. I've never shared this. So I I realized that um there was so much positive happening in my life that I need to remind myself like how grateful I need to always be and how I realized like just God was showing up in my life like that, that for me, all like I couldn't see the things that were happening in my life because things happen so fast. And I couldn't even, again, this is why I reflect so much now. I was like, wow, like I had a really good day. Like this happened, this happened. I started to uh, create like a note section in my phone called my Holy Testimony and these, I'm not going to show up, but essentially people messaging me mm. of like them deciding to go sober and by oh. me deciding to show up for myself and how I've impacted them by me just deciding to be that person. Wow. I could do this for a while. <laughs> That's these incredible. Wow. wow. So that for me was like, all right, this is why. Mm-hmm. Like, this is it. Like, this is, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. And then ultimately, I know I, I just keep going there because this is the life I'm vision. It's like I know, like by me deciding to show up as a man, like I create that home for my future family. Mm-hmm. I have the house next door for my mom. There's no fence. My kids are like living the best life ever. You know, I want to be the dad that, you know, God willing, if it's, you know, whenever that time may come, it's just like I, I never want to be the dad that can't run with the kids. You know, like I my dad was that dad for me. Like we, we would bike, we would run. He would throw me in the ocean. We would swim. So it's like I had that childhood. And I was like, I want that for my kids and more. And it's like, if I decide to continue to be like this and live this way, it's like that saying, I just see it in so many videos. I consume so much like family content now. (laughs) It's like the kids, you tell them what to do and they'll probably not listen. But if you're with them and they're watching you, they'll do the pull-ups. You know what I mean? Like they may not want to run, but they'll start to jog. And so it's like, I just need to do that. And I feel like now more than ever, my habit that I used to probably was talking about it so much. It was like, no, I'm just doing it. Mm-hmm. Like if you and if you don't believe me, just watch. Like, you know, I'm gonna love it or hate it. I'm gonna be doing it. I'm gonna figure it out. I'm gonna just try to put it together and, and just and staying focused on that on that thing where I tell myself just day by day. What's Ooh. what's sweet is we get to watch it because you film everything. <laughs> so so content CEO, follow Roger. Oh my gosh. And Roger, we could have closed this episode after five minutes because it was so powerful within seconds of taking off. But we always close our episodes with three segments. The first one is called Three Gold Stars. So three yeah. takeaways. If you were going to give three takeaways to people mm-hmm. tuning in, what would you say? Number one, if it's – for me, it's God. Um you know, to, to find, to have a relationship with him. And if you're to stay off to, to accept all religions, whatever, Allah, you know, Jewish or the universe, find that, create that relationship with a higher being. Because I, I truly believe that will, will take your life to new heights and, and, and give it new purpose because life is hard. And I think, you know, even the people closest to you and people you may admire, they, you know, they're figuring it out too. Um, and, and being in relationship with a higher being and, and prayer is so important. Um, it's changed my life. It's given me peace. It's given me moments of crying, but being grateful, but, you know, but also purpose. Uh, that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing would be, you know, you hear it all the time, but it's just so real is if you're older, is work on your inner child stuff. I don't care what anyone says. That is so real. 
I'm desiring love. And the one place that I was avoiding is literally, I could guarantee I can call my mom right now. And my mom picks up the phone smiling. <laughs> Son, I miss you. I love, just to prove my point, I'm going to call her right now. <laughs> my mom every day literally tells, this just shows how much of a mom's mom my mom is. I sent her a photo. I was I was in center before and after. So I sent my mom this photo of me and I said, look at this. And I was in disgust. This is what I looked like six months ago. And she responds, oh my God, you're so beautiful. <laughs> you great. That blue jacket looks amazing. I also I'm think like, you look great no. in that picture. I go, mom, no, this is a terrible photo of me. I was like, I'm trying to show you a different one. I was like, I'm trying to show her like that, you know? Like, and then she was like, yeah, but you still look at your cheeks. And I'm like, oh, oh my God. She loves you. So, yeah. So the idea of number two is um, work on your inner child and work on the things that I believe at those ages, not I believe, I know it's just science, that there was a lot of... Um, thoughts and things of how you view life and what happened to you that then how you perceive the world to be and how your future interactions and the future self version of you are then impacted. Um, and so for me, it was my, my inner child self with my mom and, and, and forgiving. I really forgave my dad and my mom. That was huge. So big. And just accepting for them of where they are and how they are and not, you can't, you can't change them. Um, so number one is your relationship with the higher being. Number two is working on your inner child. Um, and, and number three, it would be uh, stay curious, stay curious and smile as much as you can, because I think that is what makes life life of like the unknown mixed with the people that you meet along the way and 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 having those moments of that saying I read it the other day. It's like people show up in your life for a day for a brief moment in time or for a lifetime but they've impacted you somehow. And so I think through curiosity, uh, you could experience a lot of what life has to offer. Um, and, and saying, especially when you're younger, say yes to everything. Um, because then that's how, there were so many times where I ended up in situations and I would tell other friends of like where I am and what I'm doing. They're like, what? Well, what are you doing there? And I go, I don't know. But I was like, it just sounded fun. I was like, I don't know why I'm in the city or why, like a lot. And now I could say, it's like, all right, I'm not going to go do that. Or like, hey, I'm, you know, I experienced that already. I'm good. I know the outcome of me deciding to go there, what it will be. Um, but yeah, so uh, number one is uh, being in touch with a higher God, higher being universe, whatever you may call it. Number two, uh, work on your inner child um, because that's a clear reflection of today and your tomorrow. And number three is to stay curious and do it with a smile. I love it. Oh, okay. We could ask you a million questions, but we're only going to ask you three more for our next segment. Unleashing Ivy. Just some more questions we're curious about. My question is in reference to the amazing people you've met. You've mentioned mm -hmm. a few stories. I want to know a little story of someone you met that really impacted you. And the first one that comes to your mind. Dan changed my life. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's really the first one. There's two. It's like go back to back. Um, so I actually have there talking about gratitude and, and everything else. There was one time where a friend of mine who's an artist and I went to go visit him. And I've always just wanted to do art. I'm terrible. I was a stick figure guy the whole <laughs> life. So like I was that guy. Um, and so a lot of there's this painting that I have in my office that I look at. And it's really just a gratitude painting. And and so what, I was like holding these. I looked at it and I'm like, hmm, how do, where do I start? Um, the first one was uh, Frankie, Frankie Dag. He's someone that he was the person that had the gym. And when I started, he would literally tell me when I had no portfolio and I didn't even know how to shoot a camera. He's like, you're the best in the world. Mm -hmm. He would literally tell me that. He'd be like, you're the best. And I was like, dude, you're nuts. Like, I just started. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? I used to question, like, what? I was like, this guy's completely lying to my face. <laughs> but he would always tell me, he's like, you're the best. You're the best. And then over time, I started filming. And then other people were like, wow, you're really good. I'm like, dang, I, I don't think he was, I guess he was right. Like, you know, like, and then it was like once, like, you know, again, the the frequency of going the people locally i was being accepted by 
And then I was getting attention from people in New York City. And then when I started to get like celebrity attention and their affirmation, every time I would call him like, dude, I just worked at da, 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 da. And he said, I'm really good. And he's like, I told you. He's like, I told you from day one, you're the best. And so he saw something in me and he gave me opportunity. Um, and the next person would be Dan. Um, and and he did the same of like co countlessly just presenting me with people and me giving me doing the me giving me the chance to just show up and do what I do and entrusting in me to do that. Those two people were massive catalysts in my life. And then today, the most recent one is Vince Ritchie, who's the one who gave me like what I call like my D-Day, <laughs> of like the talk. And then I started to question my life and where I was at and what I was doing. I was like, all right, like, am I really going to change for the better? Um, those three people are pretty. It just shows though too, like it could have been like, this dude's a dick that just said this to me. Well, I did. Like... Well, I, I, I'll treat you that <laughs> night. I did. I really did. I was like, I walked out of his room. I was like, what? And I, was like, <laughs> I went to dinner. I was like, I really did. I was like, why? I was like, I just sat, I felt like I was getting scolded by the school teacher, like in middle school. He sat me down. I was just there and he's just like speaking, standing in front of me. And I'm like, he's going like that. I'm like, and he has a New York Bronx accent. So it's like, <laughs> fool. Like, you know, he's like, what, what the fuck? You know, the whole thing. And so I just, but he also, and this is why I think it's so important. He also brought into reflection that someone, he, he put it in perspective for me. He's like, well, he's like, I've had people do this for me. Mm -hmm. And he said, you could either listen to me and you could change your life for the better. Or you could walk out of this room and tell me to F off and just continue doing what you're doing and you live an okay life and nothing changes. And I want you to know, and I still remember him just saying this, and I want you to know me, my, me choosing to do this doesn't benefit me in any way. This is your life. This is for you. I was like, you choosing to go out and do whatever you want to do is for you. So if you want to continue to do and live this life that you're living, cool. doesn't bother me. It doesn't change me. It doesn't bring change my bottom line. I don't have more money in my pocket. <laughs> And then he kind of went, and then he said the, the phrase that I think about a lot of times, like, but if you do choose to listen and you start to have this mindset of maybe I'm not listening to everything he says, but you just take away one thing that you apply to your life, then it becomes interesting. He's like, then you start to see your life play out in ways that you can't even think about. And then I think about that a lot mm -hmm. where now more than ever, I'm so big on discussions where I'm like, hmm. It's not that I don't like this person, but I already know there's certain like attributes. I'm around a lot of people a lot of times and there's certain things that are give offs of like, I already know I'm not going to jab with this person. But I just I kid you not when you get with someone that you'll question a lot of what they're saying, and what they want. Just listen, listen to them, listen to every single thing that they're saying and then think to yourself, how does this make sense for me? And maybe not the entire sentence may apply to you, but maybe something at the end will or something at the beginning. We're like, ooh, this could relate to this for me. Or like, okay, you know, I may not be a fan of how he's doing business, but I love the culture that he has. Or I love that his morning meetings that he discussed that every morning at 9 a.m. he does X, Y, and Z. But I may not be, I may not be proud of how he says it, but I like the fact that he does those morning meetings. Like when I listen to people now, it, it really, it, it fascinates me how some, sometimes people would just talk. And I've literally, it was a couple of weeks ago, um, I, I can't say where, what, but I was in a car and this guy introduced himself and kid you not, I didn't say one word for 45 minutes. And he told me his entire life story <laughs> and more. And you, when you just, just listen to people, they'll tell you a lot of things that you may or may not want to hear, but sometimes you could take away certain things and you could apply it to your life. That's great advice too, because I mean, a lot of things that you're, you've told us, it's just the mindset shift and perspective shift that you, like you said, staying curious. Like, how could this yeah. help me in my life? Like, you could yeah. have been like, man, that was an annoying car ride, period, end of sentence. <laughs> or you could pull something from it or figure out what you don't want to do. Mm -hmm. Right. It's also recognizing this is important, too. It's like, I know when I see that human, I'm not getting in the car with him. <laughs> <laughs> like, that, that, no, I'm serious. Like, the saying is like, hey, like, you know. First one, it's on them. <laughs> Second one, it's on you. Mm -hmm. right? Living like, and learning. Totally. Yeah, I like think you really, like, I know if I see him, like, we did literally later that day. <laughs> like, oh, who's coming in my car? I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> no, Lesson I learned. won't. Like, I'll walk. <laughs> right. But that's the importance of listening mm -hmm. and, like, reflecting and knowing and acknowledging of, like, people. These yeah. people are really, yeah, they're really fascinating. They're really, I find them very, very fascinating. You're fascinating. I have a fascinating question for you. Okay, this is the second one. Yeah. 
10 years from now, mm. you're going to hit play on this episode again. You're going to yeah. be 40 years old. Yeah. What does life look like for Roger at 40? I never want to put a timeline on it because my life has never been that way. But if the case, it would be nice that I, I am married. <laughs> um, married three to four kids um, hope my grandma's still around I call myself wasn't cry <laughs> um, uh, um, yeah I have my partner my life partner um, I really yeah I don't I've learned that you could have a lot of the things and it just doesn't matter. It really, um, you're, you're talking to someone who's been so blessed over the past five years with so many things. And the more things that I accrued, the worse I would feel. And like thinking that I wasn't worthy or that I wasn't supposed to be in the room. So I think creating a space that I have a loving partner that God willing, I feel like what makes the most sense for me is that she's in my world too. <laughs> Um, and that we uh, we go back and forth with each other of like the perfect situation. You know, I'm filming her and making content for her and I'm able to do that for her. And that, you know, my kids see that not only personal relationship that their parents have, but they, you know, they, they're doing life together. That's what I keep telling myself is like, I don't want a partner. I want a life partner. I want, I don't want someone that's just this or just that. It's like, no, like. Well, I'm all in. Like, you know what's going on in my business. You know what's going on in my personal. Like, like there's no reason to close the door to anything. Like, when I hear that stuff, I'm like, no, I don't want that. Like, I know what I want, and I want a life partner. And that my kids see that, and that, you know, I came from, you know, the saying, live and you learn. You know, my dad did the best he could, but the reality is my household was pretty crazy growing up. And my dad made a couple of choices that he wasn't around for a little bit. And then my mom made choices that she wasn't around for a little bit. And so I've realized is that having the best control over me again, and that God willing that, you know, that, I, that, that my kids, you know, look up to me. I think everything else is just going to like play yeah. out. Yeah. I, I really, I really believe that I'm not, I'm in, I'm in, just if it's just frequency and proximity like I'm, I'm around too many rich people to be broke so I, mean, <laughs> I, don't, I don't i don't think for me and talented that's, yeah that's just not i don't i don't i don't think that's going to be a problem for me i just think it's to what degree mm. you know like how much what am i willing to accept what am i willing to allow oh i think that for me is going to be the thing and then i think yeah i think everything else would just be kind of just an add on of like, you know, God willing, you know, my sisters, my siblings are married. Oh, so I recently found out, I think that's why I'm getting emotional about it. It's like, I'm one of five and all my siblings decided like, they don't want kids. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, my mom called me the other day. It was what's today? Sunday. And I just got out of church and she was like, she was like, I just got off the phone with your older brother. And he told me he doesn't want to have kids. And she was like, and I, and I joked with her and I was like, well, you don't got to worry. So I want four or five. You're going to be pretty busy. (laughs) And my other siblings all made that decision. So I was like, I don't know. I think family, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. I love it. I can't wait for you to listen back to this. And you're gonna be like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I just, I really wanted four. Oh gosh, here we are. Okay. Yeah. I asked for this. Okay. Let's flip the script. If you could go back and tell younger Roger one thing, what age would you choose? And what would you tell him? You know, I think about that a lot. Like yesterday I saw Jimmy Rex on his Instagram story. He's like, what was the advice we give to your younger? I think about that a lot. Um, Oh, no. Mm. Mm. Probably, I guess, the only year that I could say I experienced genuine anxiety was 2020. And it wasn't even because of what happened. It was just because I made the move to LA. 
and I was so alone. And I was just like, man, this is this thing. I was like, I don't know what's going on. Like, I don't know, especially when I first started working for Dan because it was the height of everything. So people weren't seeing people. I was just seeing him and we had no personal relationship. It was very, very business. Like I was showing up, I was filming and I was leaving and I was pretty lonely. Um, yeah, I would just... It's the same, just like I always tell myself, just, you just got to keep going. Just trust on what you're doing and just keep going. Like every time I would experience any form of panic attacks or anxiety stuff, it was always when I was sitting down and not moving. So when I move, like if it's like moving and editing a video or actually moving my body, that's when I felt better. So I would just say like, just, just, just keep moving. Like the moving, the movement for me has worked out pretty damn good, mm -hmm. you know, from Miami to New York to L.A., And yeah, just, just, just keep moving because I, I truly believe that the idea of like, especially for me in my twenties, I was always like the, for me, it was every four years I've seen a cycle in my life and I just passed year four and funny enough, it was around the timing of, you know, everything going on now. So I've, I've, I've learned to sit in it and accept it because they've all served me and helped me in different ways. And I think that's special. So I, I don't. I wouldn't say anything to alter anything. I would just really just be like, just uh, just keep going. I think about the the book all the time of like, oh, if you had your book of your life, would you open it? And I was like, a couple of weeks ago, I was like, yeah, I want to read this chapter now. <laughs> I was like, I need to know. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, God has a way of showing up and, and doing things that yeah, you just can't explain. It's just like, it's God stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm doing God stuff. Wow. Well, I do not want to wrap up this episode because I feel like it is so full of so much gold, so much truth, so much wisdom. And when you said you've had a lot of time to reflect, like you can feel it. Like you, yeah. you've done a lot of reflecting and we're so grateful to have had this time with you. This is like everything that you're able to reflect on and express and articulate is like the keys to life. And so for you to yeah. sit with us, we know your time is so valuable. We are so grateful to know you to watch your journey, to share you, to share this, like, oh, to be on our platform is such an honor. So thank you so much for sitting with us today. Thank you for, it's been a minute since I've cried. So <laughs> you know, the famous saying, if you cry, you laugh, and you smile on a day, you've had a great day. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's starting off pretty good. I love it. Well, Roger, we leave our listeners with a piece of gold, a quote. Mm -hmm. Would you please share one of your favorites? The best is yet to come. This is Gold Ivy signing off. Listen to your truth and go chase your gold. We want to thank you and encourage you to celebrate yourself for taking the time to learn and get inspired in your one beautiful life. And if this podcast means something to you, it would mean so much to us if you'd be willing to take 30 seconds to help support our mission to keep bringing you inspiring stories and guests. First, Following the podcast is important because it helps you never miss an episode. To do this, just go to the Ivy Unleashed podcast show page on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts, and then just tap the plus sign in the upper right-hand corner or click on follow. While you're there, if you'd be so kind to give us a five-star rating and review and share your favorite episode with a friend, we'd be so grateful for your support. We are thrilled you're here and are so happy that you're taking time to prioritize your wellness, self-discovery, and growth with us.